So as you can see, I've started on my painting and I'm just putting in a little bit of the blocking and some background colors, basically what I'm doing. Hitting up some of the highlights and putting in some of the shadows and building up a little bit, a little as I go, little layers. Well, that's kind of how I do it. <clears throat> and I just uh, kind of decide where the light's coming from. What you see here is masking. It doesn't actually look like that in the end. That's just my masking fluid to help me not paint in an area that I want to keep in a lighter color. So that's what that is. And then sometimes, interestingly enough, as I'm mixing up my colors, I'll like notice that I've got a color that I want to go in an area that I hadn't yet planned on painting, but that it's just right. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in there, and later I will uh, add more layers to it. But this is like an underlayer for that little road. The this is where the gate is or the entrance, and I'm just gonna pop that in there since I have that color, I kind of like it. So I'm just gonna do that real quick and then pick up the excess because that's an underlayer. Leave a little bit of white spaces in there because I either become lights or shadows later. So just as a starting point, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, tune in later and it will look um, quite a bit different. So hope you guys are having a great day. So I'm back real quick just to notice something I wanted to share with you guys. Um, as I'm doing my greens and my yellows and some of the highlighted kind of more orangey areas, when I'm over here I'm like, you know, all of a sudden I just, while I'm working on back colors, I'll take a little bit of unexpected purple like that and don't mix it all the way in but just give it kind of a marbled look. I sometimes add a little touch of water with it and then I go back over here and I look at some of the areas that are going to be kind of underpainted with a darker shadow. And I'll just start popping in some of that and what's good about it is that adding the purple gives it kind of my own twist on it, you know, and adds a little extra layer, just barely, since it'll be kind of in the darker areas in the bottom. So like some of this, and it's just really, really lightly. So I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to hold my camera phone and pop in some of that. So this is ground level in this area like under the tree, has just a smidge of the purple in it, just to give it a little, like, you're not going to notice it like major, but what you are going to see is like a different tone than you were expecting to see, and it kind of adds a little bit to it. And this little area here is my little road that you saw in the last little clip, and then it trails off. So, you know, like that, so we'll rub it out. If you do see a little something that you did that you don't really like, you can wet your brush a little bit and kind of use Now look, there's so much green in the brush that it's, but that's okay because these are bushes here. Happy accidents, as our friend old Bob Ross used to say. Anyway, so this is just the very first layer. Lots to do. So again, uh, I hope you like this video, and if you do, like and subscribe, and tune in again, and I will continue on. So I keep pausing and then coming back, and I wanted to mention another little ditty that I do. Once I have popped in some color, what I'll do is I'll go underneath, and I will blend sharp edges away so that what you end up seeing before it dries too much and just kind of squiggle the brush underneath it. Again, this is just the underpainting and we don't want a bunch of sharp edges, at least not in the bottom. We want it to kind of fade away in a lot of the places until we get into details. 
So for instance, over here, I just want to kind of fade that in. Now this little section right here that you're looking at is going to be a river. You can even see where I'm putting a little bit of light shadow color in there. That's just showing the flow of the water. And by putting in the flow of the water underneath it, when I go to put things on top, you know, more detail on top, it's going to uh, show a little bit of the motion in that water. So that's just really lightly. And, oops, a little bit too much red. Notice that? Who knows what it'll end up being, but right now I don't want all that in there. So it might work out in the grand scheme of things, but right now I just want it really light. So that's my little river going on. And I see back here it looks kind of green. It's going to end up being more bluish. But anyway, um, you guys get the idea. I appreciate you watching and following along. So, again, I'm back. I wanted to mention that when you're mixing your colors and you're kind of getting into it, do pay attention to what you're actually picking up in your palette because it can get a little messy. And if you're getting done doing things really fast, you'll get over here and you'll find <clears throat> that maybe it wasn't quite the shade that you were looking for. And some of that is a little bit correctable. And other times, if it dries too fast, not so much. So do kind of watch where your brush is going in your paint palette, because I have definitely done that before. And I was like, wait a minute, I wasn't looking for that color. It happens pretty easily. So <laughs> I just wanted to mention that. And right now I'm adding some more of the greens. And I do not like just pure green, just because I think it's, well, it lacks reality, <laughs> basically. In reality, things are very varied. So I'll add some yellow and uh, it helps the eye separate out what you're looking at sometimes. Some of it will blend, some of it will not but that's kind of what I do. And I'm being kind of random over here. I didn't really draw it out completely because I wanted some freedom with that. And you may find that you want to draw every single detail and be more photorealistic. That's certainly your choice. But I'd rather kind of move the paint around and let it sort of tell me what it wants to do in some places. And as I come forward, it's going to get darker and darker and darker. And that's kind of how that works. And why why do we do that? You guys answer that question. <laughs> and up here is going to be more gray, more gray green. Put in some of those. Lift your brush up off. Don't just leave it go straight across. Give it some variations and yeah. Now you'll notice when I paint over some of these areas like that right there, see that little stripe? That's part of my masking fluid that will end up being rays of sunshine. Who wants to paint that in? So I use the masking fluid and then I will highlight some of it with some extra color and I'll show you that when we get to it. So, hope you guys are having fun following along. And maybe you'll come up with something you'd like to do. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. So, believe it or not, the end of my brush fell off. The stick. <laughs> Just got to put back on. But <clears throat> And when it fell... It fell right there and left me a little purple paint. Rather than try to clean it off, I decided to use it. And what did I do? I just kind of went like this and maybe it'll look like there's some flower bushes along that road. Maybe they're lilacs or who knows what, but I figured I might as well use them. And that's what happens. 
So I don't like to fight it unless it's really, really a bad mistake. But in some ways it kind of adds to it, so maybe it was meant to happen that way. And I would just as soon work it in. I may thin it out, I may add some more layers to it, but yeah. So when that happens, you know, don't panic. See if there's a way that you can work it in. If it's really bad, obviously you're going to take some water and work it out. <laughs> but for the most part, you can find some interesting things happening, and I see no reason to, you know, stress over it. Yeah, that's the kind of artist I am. I used to be really stressful about art. I'd be like, oh, it's got to be just right. But nowadays, um, I don't have the patience for that, to have that kind of stress. Now, I have purple on my brush, you guys. There is some purple there. I know you can't see that very well, but there is. I'm thinking, that is such a cool idea. Where else might I throw that in? Just a little bit here and there. And I'll just do something like this because I kind of like the contrast. But these will end up bushes, but right now they look like little hills, but they're actually bushes. And maybe a little bit over here. If you do it on one side, honestly, you should do it on the other side, even if it's in a lighter version of it. It helps the balance of your picture. Yes, you just want to be balanced. And just throw in some, I don't know, we'll see. I can change it later if I don't like it, right? All right, enjoy. So, stopping back by my painting. I've gotten some of the brighter colors in on the castle. <clears throat> some of you will recognize that as a very famous German castle. <clears throat> and working in some of the other colors and the landscape around it but and that's how far I've gotten so far so far I've gotten that far <laughs> anyways I'm starting to feel a little giddy <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and take a break now uh, let this layer dry and I will come back and do a little more depth work so I'm gonna make a brand new video so this one won't take up too much more time okay so thank you for tuning in. Hope you subscribe and like. Leave your comments below, and I will leave a link to my website in the uh, description. Okay? Thank you, guys.